Hey, Gio, do you have a pre-show ritual that you could share with everybody or no? A pre-show ritual. So um, I'll probably – I'll do a, a quick prayer. I'll close my eyes for like about 30 seconds just to envision who's going to be in here, try to connect – on a deeper level in terms of like, this is something that's important to somebody. Somebody was hoping and wishing that they would get the hope and motivation that they needed. So I'm really just centering my mind around that. And then um, just start moving around. I, I don't like to be a, a standing duck um, kind of thing. So that's it. So just everybody's different. Some people beat their chest. Some people listen to Rocky. Um, if I had to listen to music, it's going to be a little bit of Meek Mill and Eminem, something in there. Um, nice. <laughs> Good morning, Essex County College family. This is Joe Ott from the Student Life and Activities Department. We thank you for joining us today. Welcome to Student Success Day. Uh, this program is designed to help sharpen the tools that are actually already in your toolbox. And we enlisted the help of a professional to get you motivated, to get you in the right mindset to succeed today. His name is Javon DeRice. But before that, we ask you to please keep your microphone muted when you're not speaking as to not interrupt the presentation. And if you have any questions, you can put them in the chat for Gio or for us, and we will get to them after the presentation. So if you don't want to forget your question, you can go ahead and pop it in the chat. And when we get to the question and answer section later, we will address those no problem. We're going to get things started with a few words from one of the people who makes it go at our institution. So please give a round of Zoom applause for the Dean of Student Affairs, Dr. Keith Kirkland. Dr. Kirkland. Good morning, everyone, and thank you, uh, Joseph, for that introduction. Uh, before I go, I want to just welcome every student and, and faculty member and staff members who's participating in this. By connecting in, in, in meetings like this, we're connecting with the students, letting them know we care. And also, it's important for us to make sure we support every student activity that's here because we are about the students and about student success. The other thing I'd like to do very quickly in, in, is kind of remind all of our students and our faculty and our staff of two very important things. Please, voter registration is going on right now. It is important that each of us uh, take part in this, dip, uh, this democratic process of voting and help to shape the way our country goes politically. The power is in your hand. Use the power of the vote in order to make a difference in this world. And then last but not least is the census. Please, everyone, take advantage of filling out the census. If you know someone who has to fill it out, Encourage them to fill out the census, please. If it, and for both the voting and the census, talk to your people at the at the table in the street, on the bus, wherever. Did you fill out your census? Did you register to vote? It is so important to us at this point in time that we participate in these national events that help shape what we do. And lastly, I, I and I, I I said I wasn't going to do this, but I better. I want to thank the team that put this together. We have an awesome team of student life and activities. We have Mrs. Jamil Graham who works tirelessly to put these programs together for you to student. Mr. Joseph Ott and all of his technological wizardry and his, his savvy to make sure that we provide the best content. And quite frankly, since we've been in COVID, I have yet to see as many community colleges do what we do virtually for our students. So for Mr. Uh, Graham and Mr. I, uh, student life and development, thank you all very much. Also, I'd like to just mention that we have two of our SGA student government um, executive committees that I see in attendance. Mr. Jessica Lopez, Mr. Nick Mendez, thank you for showing or being here today. It always speaks to how student leaders support students, and you guys are a great example of what that means to be student leaders, so thank you. And if I missed anyone, please forgive me, because that's all I can see on my screen, but I do see those two. Now with the introduction. Um, this is our third year, our third program year, our second, our third program, our second year. And the second, year that we had this program was kicked off by our guest speaker today. 
He is uh, an international speaker, best-selling author, entrepreneur, founder of the company 2020 Living Inc. He's been featured in, on the Huffington Post, which I read, and News One, ABC, and BET, just to name a few. His inspirational message, engaging funny stories, helped make so many, uh, m helped make many people fulfill their dreams. He has also self-published 45 books in the last two years and uh, alone consulting other authors. Before creating his own company, he worked with several million dollar enterprises specializing in market and project management. He was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, and when he's not working, he can be found watching house hunters with his wife, who still can't believe he married him. Folks, my dad used to say to me, some people talk just to talk, but some people talk because they have something important to share. Our keynote speaker today has something important to share. I'm asking all of us to please give a big Essex County College welcome to our keynote speaker, Mr. Gio Duris. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh man, uh, first of all, I love that last line you said right there. Um, yes, a lot of people talk, but um, I'm excited because what I'm about to share with you guys today is absolutely a game changer. Now I know that's a big claim to make. You're like, Gio, you don't even know me. Like you don't know what I like. You don't know what I care about. Like how could you make such a big claim? But here's the thing that I've realized. I realized that the key to us being successful, the key to getting anything it is that you want in life is rooted in the decisions and the choices that we make. And so today, this whole presentation, my goal, my promise to you is that you will know what decisions, what choices to make to make sure that you are able to not only excel with your studies, but more importantly, to be able to excel in life to excel in life. So if you guys are with me and you are excited and you want to know what I'm going to share with you, because these are secrets, like normally secrets are supposed to be kept, but today I've decided to partner with Essex to share them with you. So if you're ready, just put in the chat, Geo, I am ready to hear the secrets. Let me see it in the chat. I'm not getting started until I know that the people are ready to hear what is about to be dropped today. Geo, I'm ready. I see it. Okay. I'm ready to hear it, says Nick. Kevin, ready to hear? Okay, I'm ready, I'm ready. Okay, oh, somebody wrote secrets in caps. Like somebody, that, when you write the caps in the chat, that means you screaming at me. So they're like, yo, Jill, secrets! Like somebody's really ready to receive them. Guys, I'm super excited to be here with you guys. It's gonna be absolutely amazing. Now, I would not be remiss if I know that we sit here and we do a lot of Zooms and then, is about Zoom fatigue. People are tired. It's like the camera's off. I didn't even put my makeup on. I didn't got my. I didn't put on my mask last night, so my face not looking exactly the way I wanted to look and things like that. So here's what I want to do to kick us off. I want to play a little game, a little quick game, just to make sure that we're awake. Again, please, this is so important what we're going to be talking about. So if you could t just get off your phones for the next 45 to 60 minutes, I promise you it will be worth your while. I know what it's like to be on Zooms where you kind of like, you know, your camera off, so you on your phone and you like sending the messages. Y'all probably chatting about the Yankee game, talking about, do you think we got a chance to beat the Indians? They got a pretty good picture. Or you're thinking about, dang man, what time does Chick-fil-A open again? Like, I know we have these side conversations, but let's just lock in into this presentation. So anybody has ever played, have you ever played this game right here? Anybody's ever played the game, guess the emoji? Anybody familiar with it? Let me know in the chat if you're familiar with this game. We're going to play it quick. Prince says yes. Kevin, Felicia said nah. Yo, there's some nice names in here. I see a lot of no's, a couple of yeses. So here's the, we're going to play a quick game. It's about like five of these. And here's the way we're going to play it. You're going to see an emoji on the screen. And you just got to put in the chat, what is the emoji? Just put it in chat. I'm going to see who says it first. The brag, you're only going to get bragging rights. So guys, I, I ran out of Amazon gift cards. I'm sorry. Right? But, <laughs> right? but, um, but just, you're going to get bragging rights. But I just want to see if you guys can get it. This, it gets, starts off easy. Then it gets a little bit harder afterwards. Are y'all ready? Let's get started. What is this? Let me see in the chat. Myra says it. Got it right. 
catfish. Oh man, that was too easy. Like, Myra, like the like Myra, can you please give people a chance? Like they they only saw the cat, they didn't even see the fish part yet, and you already writing the whole thing. Like this is that. Give it a chance. All right, next one. Let's go into the next one. What's this one, people? What is this one? Let's see if we get it. Katie says seven up. Good guess. And that's not it. Osaru. Lucky seven says Asia. Close. Oh, Phil. Sufian or Sufan. Got it right. Good luck is the answer. Good job. You know, I, I did this yesterday. It's a little bit longer than that. Good luck. Good stuff. Let's see the next one. What is this, people? What do we see here? Let me see. Which one is this one? Let's see. Put it in the chat. What's your guess for this one? Joseph says pen. Penmanship. I see brain. These are some good guesses. Let's see. That's a good one. I like the penmanship part. I didn't even hear. I've never heard that suggestion before. It's not it. Keep going. Put in the chat what you guys think it is. Take a wild guess. I was going to say penmanship too, says Eartha. <laughs> Asaru said um, penmanship. Keep going. That's not it. Take another guess. We're going to take about two more guesses. Shant, Miss Hunt, Hunt, yep, pen pals is the right answer. Good job. Good job. All right, here's the next one. What you guys think this is? Next one. Miss Hunt got that one right. <laughs> Muriel says, Miss Hunt, give us a chance, though. <laughs> what is this one, guys? Put it in the chat. Eartha says, Fist Club. Ooh, close. Asia got it correct. It is Fight Club. All right. This is the last one. The last one. And then we're going to jump into our presentation. What is this one? A lot of people had to fight right in Fight Club. What is this one? Nick. Nick is like, Gio, I'm ready for the presentation right now. Nick, you have gotten it correct. Myra, you got it. Oh, I saw Myra. Yeah, for, you came first. It's guest genes. You guys are absolutely right. So this is the end. And I feel like a, I feel like a person who's running the Wheel of Fortune. This is the end of guess that emoji. Like, all right, now we're going to, now, now let's do what we really are here to do, which is to discuss about success everybody, I've been to so many places. I've been as far as Northeast as Vermont. I've gone all the way West to Washington, not Washington, DC, but my Washington state where it rains all the time, right? I've been there and I've always asked this very simple question. Who wants success? Who wants success? We all want success. I've never seen an audience that says, ah, nah, I don't want no success. No one ever comes into a room and says, you know what, Gio, as far as success goes, I had enough of it. I don't need no more. I don't need no more wins. I don't need no more money. I don't need no more jobs. I don't need no more great, good grades. We all want success. But today, my goal is to tell you not just how to be successful. That's not the goal for today. The goal for today is to show you how to become highly successful. Now, y'all might be wondering, Gia, what does highly successful look like? I'm talking about where it looked like success in the morning. It runs after you instead of you running after it. I'm talking about like the success where you just wake up like Beyonce said, I woke up like this. I'm talking about that type of success where success just be on you. Like when I looked in the dictionary and I looked up the word success, I saw Nick, I saw Jessica's face, like that type of like, I'm talking about like that kind of success. They're like, yo, these people make it look so easy. And here's the thing about success. We think that there's some secret formula that only a few people know about. Today, those are not going to be the case. That's not going to be the case no more. At the end of this presentation, you are literally going to know the three decisions that people are making. It's not about your IQ. So if some of you feel like, yo, Gio, I was horrible in high school, that's cool. You could have been horrible in high school, but this is a new chapter. And what I'm sharing with you today has nothing to do with your IQ. It has nothing to do with your IQ. All it has to do is with your ability to go and make these three decisions, that when you make these three decisions, it literally changes the game. People, this is the equivalent of a cheat code. If you ever played a video game, those who love video games, this is the equivalent of a cheat code. This is that guide where you be winning the game before everybody and they say how you do it, but you kind of know a little bit of something on the side that nobody else knows. 
they know you know how to push up, up, down, down, A, B, X. I don't know what the buttons are nowadays. They, they just keep changing it up, right? That's what I knew. I knew A, X, B, and all that stuff. Obi says, I want to be successful myself. Um, yes, absolutely. We all want success. Now, here's the thing. When it comes to being successful, there are some little things that we don't realize is happening. Success is something that is often invisible in the beginning. Let me say that again. Success in the beginning is invisible. It doesn't go and you say, hey, I handed in one assignment and all of a sudden I'm the smartest student in the world. It's not about the, hey, I showed up one time. It's the repetition over and over again that happens. It's like somebody who says, hey, I planted a seed. Kyron said, there is no end to success. Success is a journey. Don't, don't be stealing my lines. What you doing? Now I'm playing, right? That's absolutely correct. Success is a journey. It's not a thing that, it's not the destination. It's not an end point. Here's the cool thing about success. The beautiful thing about it is once you finish accomplishing something, that end gives birth to a new beginning so you can start a whole different journey to go and become successful in something else. And so what I want to show you guys is just a little bit of a preview of what success actually looks like. By any, um, let me just see in the chat, how many of you have seen this movie, Karate Kid? How many of you have seen Karate Kid? Just put it in the chat, you've seen Karate Kid. Some of you may have seen the original. Some of you may not have seen the Jackie Chan one. You looking at like, hey, the other one with Daniel Sun. I see success is determination. I see, yup, I did, me, me, Stanley, I see you. Um, Francisca, Francesca, Francisca, I see you. Obi says success is an attitude. Joseph says I do with Jaden Smith and, and Jackie Chan. So I'm gonna play this quick video for you. I just want you to go and pay attention. Watch very carefully. There are little clues and things that happen in this video that will literally show you what we're going to get into today. So let me just go ahead and play. Get it, okay? Be respectful. Everything we do is our dream. It lives in how we put on the jacket, 
how we pick off the jacket. And they've seen how we treat people. Everything is Kung Fu. Guys, listen, I see um, somebody wrote perseverance says Prince. What did you guys see in that video? Put it in the chat. Discipline says Justin. Yes. What did you, patience is key says Phil. Mm-hmm. Let's go, keep going. What, do you, what did you guys pick up from that video? This is one of the best clips I've ever seen. Consistency, honor, dedication, rigid style, resilience, positive attitude, encouragement, right? Mm-hmm. Repetition, yes. Motivation. You guys are getting it. Yep, yep. Humble. Progress will show improvement. We learn and grow. Trusting the process. Determination, swiftness, patience. I see that came, come up a lot. Do you guys realize there's a couple of things I want to really point out when it comes to this whole thing? Now, how many times have you heard someone say, hand in your assignment, show up on time, be respectful, hold the door? We hear these things so many times, just like he was like, I did this kick, uh, I've done this a thousand times. And I was a little scared. Like when he said, what? I've never been able to say what like that to an adult. I'm not, that's a butt whooping in my household, right? Like I'm like, oh no, no, what? You turn around. Listen, I was the type of person where I would get angry at my parents. I would go and slam the door, but I would intercept the door before it closed because I know if they hear the sound of the door closing, that's my butt. Like I'm like, I'm like, Ugh! and I'll just go and block it, right? You see his attitude and he has a level of frustration that he has because he's been doing it over and over and over again. And here's the thing, and this is the reason why all of us get frustrated when we're on our journey to become highly successful. Those 1,000 kicks, we don't see the point. Put in the chat right now if that's one of the biggest things that makes school sometimes so hard is we don't see the point. It's like, yo, why am I doing this? Why am I doing math with letters? I never see no letters in my bills. My bills got numbers. Why am I doing this? It's all you, hey, show up on time, hand in an assignment, write a 15 page paper. And you sit in here like, what type of job am I gonna get that I gotta write 15 page papers? But then all of a sudden you go and get a career where you gotta go and put together reports for your team. And now all of a sudden you start to see what is the connection between what you're doing right now and how it connects to where it is that you're trying to go. The reality is this, and here's the thing, and this is my deepest, deepest wish for every single one of you who are listening to me right now. My wish is that you will be able to have the same face that Jaden Smith had when he started to make the connection that pick up my jacket all of a sudden made him have the ability to block and to be able to hit with power because that's when he realized. Did you notice when he realized and he looked at his hands, like he just became transformed and was like, whoa, like this is inside of me? I'm telling you the reason why I'm so excited to be doing this presentation is because success, highly successful, is inside of you already. I am not here to go and put something inside of you. I'm here to just flip the switch because I already know it's there. I know you got it. As a matter of fact, if you didn't have it, you would not show up. Why would you be here if you didn't think, hey, maybe somebody gave you an incentive and they said, hey, you know what, if you show up here, I'll give you an extra Chick-fil-A card or something. I don't know what they did to get you to come here, but I firmly believe that a part of you deep down wants more. Of deep down, you like Gio, I've experienced some life. Some of you are going to school right now, you have jobs, and you are parents. Some of you, you got full-time jobs, you now have this thing where you're doing stuff remotely, and you're like, man, I got all this stuff that is bogged down. Some of you, maybe you don't have children, but now all of a sudden in your resume, you're going to go and put teacher's aid because you're helping a sibling at home with remote learning. I don't know what your background is, but I'm here to tell you that your background doesn't discount you from the promising future that you have. And the key that gets us there is understanding that, listen, this stuff that he said, what did he say about Kung Fu? He said, Kung Fu is everything. It's in everything we do. So when you're in this experience, while we at Essex, Essex is a dress rehearsal for real life. I'll say that again. Essex is a dress rehearsal for real life. 
College is a dress rehearsal. It's the place where you can develop your communication skills. It's the place where you can learn responsibility. It's the place where you can go ahead and learn how to be a leader. It's the place where you could go and find out what is it that you like and what is it that you don't like. It's a chance for you to learn and meet the highest version of yourself, but that will not happen by osmosis. That will not happen by just sitting down on the couch. It will not happen by watching another series on Netflix and binge watching it. It will only happen if we do it on purpose, if we're very intentional with what we're doing. And so the first decision and the first thing that I want you to get for us to get and something that I had to learn myself was this reality that practice is everything. Everything we do is practice. They say repetition is the mother of learning. Repetition is the mother of learning. All of us in the beginning of anything that we're trying to do, anything that we're trying to do, you will look bad in the beginning. Don't believe me? Don't believe me? Imagine what it looked like. Just go back for a second and think about the first day you tried to walk. The first day you tried to walk, all of us looked like Bambi. We all look like some man, like we could not, we over here and our knees is buckling, you falling down, you making mistakes, you don't know what you're doing. Then at some point you got the revelation, you know, if I just hold on to something, like I'm holding on to this chair right now, maybe I can get it a little bit better. And you started doing that and then you started to become brave. And you were like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and leave this couch and I'm gonna go and try it. And you fell down, you got back up, but you never learned or interpreted that you could never walk. It was through the practice over and over again. For some of you, it might be math. You're like, yo, Gio, you don't know. Like, my struggle is math. Like, I'm telling you, if math was not a requirement, my GPA would be looking really good right now. For some of you, it might just be like, yo, I don't like no social sciences, political science, social science, I don't, social studies, history. I don't like none of those people. I don't like none of them. You like say, it's your enemy. You like I don't like none of these things. Some of you said lyrics. Whatever it is, we all struggle with it in the beginning. But it's those who understand that every expert, every master, always started off as a beginner. Every all of us in the beginning, it always starts off as it's a challenge. It's a challenge. But those who are highly successful, they understand that every rep I take is going to get me a lot closer to becoming a master at my craft. That means whatever subject that you are struggling with right now, if you put in the work and you practice, you will get better. Now, here's the thing. I know I saw someone say practice makes perfect. And here's the thing. I want to make sure we understand this. I wrote this in my book. Practice actually doesn't make perfect if we're practicing poorly. There's some such a thing, because you could imagine if you're doing it wrong all the time and you keep practicing it, you're just learning how to keep doing it wrong. This is the beauty of when you're in college to go to your professors, to go to your, your, your advisors and to ask them, hey, I'm trying to get better at this. Can you tell me what are some things that I can actually put into practice to make me better at math? What can I do to put into practice to be able to get it better at reading, to be better at being able to communicate, to be better as a leader? You literally want to know what things to practice. I see some people jumping in here. Guys, welcome, 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 welcome. Appreciate you guys. Welcome, welcome. Chemistry students, thank you for joining as well. Thank you guys so much. Guys, this is huge. We see, I see 100 on here. Thank you guys for joining. Listen, practice is the biggest thing that we have to get. If you, if you don't skip practice, I promise all of you that you will shine in the game. If you don't skip practice, you will shine in the game. When I look at basketball players like a Steph Curry, who's my, one of my favorites, and I see him shooting these crazy shots, or when you see your favorite singer go out and perform in front of thousands, the reason they're able to perform in front of thousands is because they were able to go and put into practice in front of one. They went and they practiced when nobody else was watching. And so when the lights came on, they didn't go and shrink. They actually shined. And those who shine when the lights are on, it's only because when the lights were off, they were working. 
And I'm here to share with you that all of us, if you are willing to go and put in the work, I'm not ever saying it's easy. It's going to be hard work. I'd be lying to you if I said what I'm telling you today is easy. It's hard. But here's a quote that I live by. If you do what is easy, life will be hard. But if you do what is hard, life will be a little bit easier. You just got to be willing to go ahead and put in the work. If you are one of those people who is listening to me right now and says, Gio, I'm willing to put in the work, put it in the chat right now. I'm willing to put in the work. Put it in the chat. I want to just make sure that I got the right people on the bus because where I'm trying to take you to is a beautiful place, but I just got to make sure you're here with me. I see I'm willing to put in the work. Miriam says it. Carl said it. I'm willing to put in the work. I'm, <laughs> I love Lorraine, Lorraine, Lorraineus or Lorraineus says, I've been willing to put in the work. I like that swag. You're like, Yo, I, I've done this. This is who I be. Like, this is what I do. I, I love it. I love it. I'm going to put in the work. I'm going to put in the work. Phil says, willing to put it every single day. I see it. All right, we ready. We ready. We ready. So the biggest thing, the first thing we got to be decision. <laughs> Joseph says, I'm willing to put in the work because, let me just see it. Let me just see, because it pays off for education, period. Yes, Nelson Mandela says the greatest and most powerful weapon in the world is an education. And you guys are all pursuing that right now while you're in your studies, even though the circumstances are not ideal. It's easy. Some students have made a decision, I'll go to school later. Because this pandemic is not the ideal condition of how I wanted to go to college. But, some of, but that same thing is here's the beautiful thing about what every single one of you are doing right now. What you are doing is you're learning and you're putting in practice on how to perform when the conditions are not ideal. Anyone could perform when everything is all the ducks is in a row, when the sun is shining. We all can go ahead and do that. But the challenge, the challenge is how do we perform when the conditions are not ideal? That's the conditions we find ourselves in today, right? Antoinette says, if it was easy, everyone will do it. Absolutely. If it was easy, everybody would do it, 100%. So now I'm gonna tell you the next thing. Guys, can you tell me who this is? Who is this? Oh, hold on, right? We see Drake. Joseph says Drake, right? I love Drake. I love Drake. That's one of my homies. And when I say one of my homies, I don't mean like I got his number or anything. I'm just saying that I like his song. All right. Some people are going to hit me up in my DM. Yo, tell Drake, send me some OVOs or something. I'm like, yo, you know what? Just tell him to make, put me in the song. Don't talk about Kiki. Say Jessica or say Antoinette in the song or something. Like, I don't want you going, like, come on, Champagne Poppy. Tell us, put my name in the song. Right. But here's the thing that I realized that I love the song in my feelings, right? I love this song, but here's the thing that I've realized. Have you guys ever felt like, let's say today, right now, as I'm speaking to you right now, and I'm looking outside at my window, I see some rain. Tell me if you are one of these people who say, and maybe you're guilty, maybe it's just me who does something like this. Maybe none of you in this chat at all do this, but when it starts to rain, you know what, sometimes I'll say, you know what, it wasn't meant for me to go outside today. You know what, just going to school, going to work, if it was supposed to be meant to be for me to go to work, it'd be sunny outside. If it was meant to be for me to go to class, it'd be sunny outside. If it was meant to be, it would, everything would line up and I wouldn't have to do anything. You know what? No, I would just register and they would just write an A automatically. Like, like that's what I want, right? We start and we get the feelings and when, here's what happens when it rains, we go and say, you know what? I'm not feeling, I ain't feeling it today. Tell me in the chat, somebody says, that's dead me, right? Right? So I said it. We think about these feelings. If, if everything was easy, nothing would be achieved. Yes, Jerome. So the reality is that what happens with our feelings is this. If we let our feelings be the driver of the car to where it is that we're trying to go, then what will happen is every single day, our, we would be going into many different places. How many of us have woke, waken up in the morning you said, you know what, today's gonna be the day. Like, I'm about to go and be so productive. Like, I'm gonna kill it today. Like, I know yesterday was a bad day, but today, I'm, it's, it's, I'm ready for today. Like, Monday, I don't like Mondays. But Tuesdays, Tuesdays is my day. That's my Monday. And then somebody cuts you off, somebody step on your fresh white sneakers or something, and now all of a sudden, your day is ruined. Just because like, ooh, the white ones, ooh, right? So you literally go ahead and we'll say, 
you know what? I ain't feeling like it. All of a sudden, you woke up in the morning super hyped. One bad thing happens to you, and now your feelings has changed the course of where you are going. And now instead of making that right decision, you're now making the left decision and saying, I'm out of here because I don't feel like it. The people who are highly successful, they go and apply what I call the hashtag, hashtag Drake, no Drake rule. The hashtag no Drake rule basically means I will not be stuck in my feelings. I will be stuck in what? My commitments. I will not be stuck. Here's what commitment is. But my feelings can't change nor stop me, says OB. I got a great goal ahead. Yes, OB, yes. Phil says, my goals fuel the fire in me. Yes, absolutely. Like, y'all get in it. Y'all get in it. I'm telling you, when we have our feelings be the driver, we'll get off the road to, and we were on success road and we'll take an exit. Feelings will make you take an exit. Feelings will have you double park the car on the side of the road. Feelings will have you go and hit and stay in park while everybody else is still driving. I'm not concerned with whether you drive fast or whether you drive slow. What I'm concerned about is that you are going, period. I'm not worried about the speed. I'm just worried about whether you're on the road or whether you got off. Feelings will have us getting off the road. Commitment will say, you know, my, no matter what, I'm staying here. I'm not going nowhere. Now here, this is by no means am I saying to you, don't practice self-care. <laughs> Obi says, when I make it, Gio will know I exist. Obi, I'm, I, 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 I want front row seats. I want front row seats. You hear me? Right? So the reality is this. We have to understand this, people. Like, commitment is everything. Commitment is making the decision, the choice to do what you said you were going to do long after the feelings are gone. Long after the excitement of the goal is gone, the commitment is what holds us there. It's what makes sure that we stand packed. Now, some of the people, when I say this about commitment over feelings, they say, Gio, that's not fair. Gio, what are you saying? Are you practicing stoicism? You're saying that we're not supposed to feel anything? I'm not allowed to get angry. I'm not allowed to be upset. By no means am I saying that I don't want you to go and be upset if something upsets you. By no means am I saying you can't be angry if you're angry or sad. By no means am I saying that. Some of us have had a hard time this year with COVID and maybe some family members may have been lost or maybe you've lost your job and that can bother you. And I'm not saying don't let it bother you. If you got to take a time out, take a time out. But by no means turn off the game. Don't turn off the game. If you need a time out, get a time out. Because here's the thing that I've realized with people who are successful. Those who are successful, this is what happens. There's two people that start the journey. These are two different people. One person will start the journey and they'll get to the middle of the road. And when they get to the middle of the road, they'll literally say, you know what, something happened to them. And they're like, you know, I ain't feeling this no more. This is too hard. I knew I wanted to go over there, but this is just too much for me to bear. And what they will do is they'll get halfway and then they'll start back where they came from. The other person will go and go through the same thing. They'll go on the journey, they'll go halfway, something will happen to them, and they will go ahead and say, you know what, I'm gonna call a 20 second timeout from here. I'm gonna go and talk to my advisor. I'm gonna talk to Mr. Graham. I'm gonna go talk to Joe. I'm gonna go and talk to, um, to the dean, and I'm going to, I'm gonna talk to my professors. I'm gonna talk to the faculty. I'm gonna talk to my advisors, and I'm gonna tell them that I am going through something right now. And the reason you're reaching out is because you're honoring your commitment. You're honoring the fact that I don't want to go back. I'm willing to stand here, and if I gotta figure it out from here, I'll figure it out from here. And then when you get that extra help, you'll be able to get to the finish line. Now, the interesting thing between these two people is they both traveled the same distance. They both traveled the same distance. The difference was the person who kept on going after a timeout got to the destination, they got to the goal, and the person over here is starting off and they're starting the journey all over because they did not take the resources that's available. I would be remiss if I told you don't listen about college, guys. Let me tell you this. This is a sidebar. This is one of the seats. I didn't even plan on sharing this with you guys. My definition of a successful college student, this is how I know your journey was successful at Essex. When you are done with Essex, here's what I want Essex to do. I want Essex to say, you know what, Keith? You know what, um, let me go and see who else is in Patricia. You know what, Nadal? You know what, Jason Antoinette? You know what, Felicia? You know what, 
Francis, you know what, McCall, Shari, Asia, Adriana, Alexander, Helena, you know what? We didn't charge you enough money for your tuition because you've been using the heck out of us this whole time. That's my definition of someone who's super successful. You want to go and walk in. You want to send emails like crazy. You want to go ahead and literally have people say, you know, and Mr. you want Mr. Graham to say literally, listen, yo, you've been sending me like 20 emails. It's already enough, but they'll never say enough because they want you to win. What's the hashtag they live by? Hashtag student first. So they're not going to go and look at your email and be like, yo, you know what, man, stop, stop sending me emails. No, ask them the questions because you're so committed to the goal that you're trying to accomplish. If you guys are with me still and you got to com put commit, I'm committed in the chat. Put committed in the chat. I got to make sure that I'm talking to people who ain't stuck in their feelings. I don't need to be with people who are about that commitment life. Like hashtag no Drake. I'm a committed Gio. When I'm trying to go these goals, they finna get done. I need to make sure I get these goals accomplished. And the reason why is because somebody, somebody is counting on me. I don't know about y'all, but I know there's some people who are watching you right now and they're saying, Nick, if you stop wherever you end, that's my top. That's the, that's the furthest I'll go is how far you go, Nick. And so they're looking at you and they're like, yo, Nick, I'm not even going to tell you I'm watching, but I'm watching. And if you go ahead and you become a student leader and you go ahead and you go and advocate for the students and you show me what is possible, Nick, you open up a new world for me. You stretch my mind. And there's a quote that says this. If you stretch a person's mind, it never returns back to the shape it was before. You, all of you who are listening to me right now, all 100 of you who's tuning in right now, faculty included, we have the ability right now to stretch the capacity of what people are capable of doing, including ourselves, to show people that there is more out there. And by all means, I'm going to claim every single thing with my name on it. I'm not leaving that on the conveyor belt for somebody else to claim. No, this is my baggage. I'm going to go claim it right now. And the key to getting there is to honor your commitments, to know what is it that you want and to go and go after it by any means. And if you need a timeout to practice your self-care, go ahead and do that. Um, I see a question. Can Essex please give me unlimited access to the number of applications? That, talk to Mr. Graham afterwards, right? But here's the thing. I need you to be committed. Here's the thing I will tell everybody here. Everybody here, if you show the people at Essex that you're committed, they'll be committed to you. We have to show them first. They're already here and they're waiting, but they're just waiting for you to say, I am here. There's a quote that says that when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. When the student is ready, the teachers will appear. They're going to appear. Your help is waiting for you to say, Gio, I'm, I'm all in. Gio, I'm committed. Gio, I, I'm, my, my thing is stamped. It's sealed. I don't have the envelope. It's not open. It's a done deal. I put it in the mail already. I voted for myself. I'm going to make sure on the topic of voting, make sure you vote and make sure you fill out that census too, please. Right? But make sure you go and exercise the right to be the best version of you. The best version of you. A lot of us, we have the ability to vote right now only because somebody was committed to make sure the future would look different than it looked in the past. I'm hoping that I have some people who are history makers listening to me right now who's saying, Gio, because of my commitment, somebody else will have a new reality, a new standard, because I decided to stand firm even though the storms came all around me. I decided to plant my feet and I said, you can, listen, you, whatever's coming at me, you can come at me. I know I'm feeling some type of way right now, but my commitment is going to make those feelings fade because I got to go to where I'm trying to go. Omar says, commitment is what keeps me going and motivation is what gets me started. Omar, you got some bars. Like, absolutely, right? Um, Francis says, can we also not forget God is also a part of our success? I, guys, we can't do it alone. We cannot do it alone. We need every resource we can get. God is important. And anybody, whatever you believe in, belief is super important. Super important for us to get to where is it that we're trying to go, right? Phil says, break that wall. Absolutely. So when we look at this, and I'm just going to show you real quick, these are images of me just speaking all over the country, right? What happens with this is everybody sees this picture. I'll post it on social media. Oh, my God, Gio, that's so amazing. You went to Bermuda? You did this? And all these things is cool. But here's the thing I want you to understand. When it comes to success, 
This is what it looks like. This is what success looks like, people. What everyone sees on social media is what, looks, what it looks like on the top of the water. They see success. They see you got the new job. They see you got the good grades. They see that you, you're excelling. They see you getting student government positions. They see that you're getting leadership. They see that you're getting scholarships. They see that you're getting funding. They see you getting all these things, but what they don't see is what's underneath the water. What they don't see is the hard work. What they don't see is the persistence. What they don't see is the late nights you stayed up writing that paper, doing those assignments. What they don't see is how many times you applied to get federal aid, how many times you applied for that job, how many times you've tried to go and take that math class over and over again, and you've been struggling to, draw and overcome, to overcome that struggle, and you've had to deal with the rejection. They don't see the sacrifices you make when you got to go and stay up at four o'clock in the morning to go and do assignments because that's the only time your children are sleeping. They don't see these sacrifices. They don't see the discipline that where you have said yes to certain things because that's what your commitment is about and they don't see the fact that you're saying no to the things that are not consistent with your goals what about criticism anybody been criticized for going to college anybody in this chat right now maybe somebody said who you think you are to go to college none of us have ever gone to college no one in the family's gone to college you think you brand new now or you somebody because you went to college now Oh, you think because you got a little certificate, you got a diploma, you brand new. Okay, I see how you are. No, all of us have dealt with criticism. We've all dealt with it. We've all had people who tell us that crabs in a barrel and say, hey, come back here. Don't come over here. You think you're going to try to level up? No, we all stay down here, up to here, where you don't see the person no more, right? No, let's stand up and just make sure like, yo, I want this success and I'm willing to do it. Now, I'm just curious by those who's in the chat right now, which one of the things underneath the water is the hardest for you? Which one of those things underneath the water is your, is Nick says criticism. Prince says late nights. Nick said, I ain't gonna lie, man. I, I feel you. Failure says Denise. Sacrifice to Marielle. Ivana says risk. Somebody said all of them. That's honest. That's keeping it 100. Keep it real. Doubts, late nights, criticism, failure, the brick wall, late night doubts and failure, says Elizabeth, right? Phil says all of them, all of them, right? We all have these things that underneath the water, we're like, oh my gosh, man, this thing is so hard. But like I said earlier, if we're willing to do what is hard, life will become easy. But if we avoid all the things underneath the water, we will never get what's above it. We'll never get the success that we crave if we don't go and put in the hard work. I have this picture here that everybody laughs at me when I show it, right? And they always say like, gee, oh my gosh, like you're a great speaker. And yes, you do this and that. And I said, thank you. But here's the thing that people don't realize. The same person you're listening to right now is the same person in third grade. I'm Haitian American. I'm, you know, my parents are immigrants. They came to America to give me a better opportunity. I'm grateful for that. But what people don't realize is in third grade, I was made fun of for speaking basic English because that was not my first language. And so people made fun of me because of my accent. People criticized me for my accent. And so I was like, man, I don't want to talk no more. Tell me if you, anybody like this in this chat right now, you've ever done this before, right? How many of you have ever done this where you've been in a class and they told you to read out loud and you would look at the paragraph that they told you to read and you would see one of those hard words that you don't understand. And you would raise your hand like I did and say, hey, I got to go to the bathroom real quick. It's an emergency. And you're like, yes, I just avoided that challenge. I just avoided that obstacle. Oh, I just avoided being embarrassed. I just avoided being criticized. I just got, and you think that you avoided it. And then you come back to the class and the teacher says, hey, who did not go? And then all of a sudden, they go say, everybody says, Gio didn't go yet. And then the paragraph that I was, running away from, the new one they gave me has harder words than the one that I ran away from. I'm here to tell everybody here, don't run away. That brick wall some of you have been talking about, the best way to get around a brick wall is to just go right through it. Doesn't mean it's not going to hurt, but that's the best way to make sure that we get to where we're trying to go. And so that looks differently for all of us. Some of us, I saw somebody here um, Antoinette said, now I dive in. Absolutely. Here's the crazy thing that I've realized, guys. 
you ever have noticed there's two people who go to pools? There's those who jump in the water immediately, and then there's those who just tippy toe. Here's the one thing that I realized that, that blew my mind. Whether you jump in the water or go with your tippy toe, the temperature of the water never changes. The temperature is exactly the same no matter what your approach is. So I'm like, yo, whether I tippy toe or without jump is the same temperature. So I might as well do whichever one I want. I might as well just jump in the water at that point. But for some of us, I'm telling you, the things in the, underneath is the thing that's going to hold us back. And those who are highly successful, they are committed to doing the things that's underneath the water to make sure that they get what's above it. And all of you, you guys have said it, right? I've seen people in the chat say, yo, I'm committed, I'm committed, I'm committed, I'm committed, I'm committed, I'm committed. And so this is the last decision we got to make. Let me just recap real quick. The first decision we have to understand, the first mindset that we got to lock in is that everything we do literally is practice. If you don't go to class, you're practicing a behavior that's going to make you not go to work. You, everybody thinks, well, when I got a job, I'll take it seriously. No, college is the time to go and work out that seriously. So that way, when you get to your destination, you get there and you are ready to go and shine and not shrink when the lights are the brightest, right? So we understand that practice is everything, just like the movie showed us. All those 1,000 assignments, all those showing up on time, all those, hey, would you turn on your camera when we're doing this presentation, right? Obi, thank you. Um, literally, when we think about, oh, well, I don't want to go and show up. I don't want to be on Zoom. I don't want to be on these platforms. I don't want to attend a virtual cafe. Here's the thing. The people who are highly successful, they're the ones who are willing to do what everyone is not willing to do. And because they're willing to do what everyone is not willing to do, they get to live the life that not everybody gets to live. They're able to live the life that not everybody else gets to live because of what? The choices that they made, the decisions that they're making. And here's the last one. This is the last decision we have to make. <laughs> this is the last one. I see Marianne says, truth, go before time is on. Yeah, I'm going to go. We're going to go. We're going to go. Real quick. Required and optional is the biggest thing. Anybody in the chat real quick, tell me, what is February 14th? Anybody can tell me what February 14th typically is? Let me see it in the chat real quick. I want to make sure we don't run out of time. Go quickly. Quick. Valentine's Day says Nick, right? Valentine's Day says Elizabeth. So Valentine's Day last year, I found out something that was crazy. Last year on Valentine's Day, I'm thinking it's going to be the best day ever. I got my wife. We've been married for five years, about to be six. I'm going to go and do this cool stuff. This is going to be amazing. I got some boys to men tickets. I got some flowers. It's going to be amazing. And on that morning, I got a phone call that changed everything. I got a phone call from a doctor that says, I need you to go to the hospital right now. I said, the hospital right now? What are you talking about? He said, I need you to go to the hospital right now. I go and said, why? He said, your blood sugar is out of control. I said, out of control? I said, well, what do you mean? He said, I can't talk to you right now. It's too much. Just know that it's about six to seven times the normal limit. Your blood sugar is about 600. It's supposed to be 100. I said, whoa. He said, go to the emergency room. Don't pick which emergency room. You don't have a choice. Go to the nearest one. So I go over there. I'm in there for about six, seven hours. And then I find out from the doctor. And you know, when you go to the doctor or the emergency room and the doctor is putting his hand through his hair, you know it's not good news. When, they, when a doctor nervous and they're like, ah, how am I gonna tell you this? It's, it, it gets a little scary. And that was the time that I found out that I got type two diabetes. And I'm like, type two diabetes? I'm like, no way, are you kidding me? There's no way this is happening to me. My parents don't have it, all these things. There's no way I could have this. No, I know I'm not feeling too good, but this can't be the case. And so that night I'm in the hospital and I meet my nurse. And for anybody who's studying nursing, I truly appreciate all the nurses in the world because this nurse told me something that literally has changed the trajectory of my whole life with just this one thing. And this is the thing I saved for last because it's one of the most important things ever. She said, Gio, there are two types of people who will come into this hospital. There's one who has diabetes and there's one who diabetes has them. There's one who has diabetes and there's one who diabetes has them. And she said, the person who has diabetes will never come back here again. The person who diabetes has them, they'll be here every single week for the rest of their life. Which one will you be? Which choice will you make? And I said, whoa, dang, this is crazy. And I said, that night I made the decision that I was gonna go and have diabetes, it wasn't gonna have me. 
instead of thinking about the things that I was doing in the past that was optional, like eating healthy, living a healthy lifestyle, drinking water, those were optional for me. But what I realized was for me to have the highest version of my life, I had to make the optional a requirement. It's optional to go and email your professors when you have questions. What the health? I've seen what the health, Marielle. It's definitely been helpful. Thank you so that's for that suggestion. The highly successful people make the optional required. This is big. Like if you don't get anything else from this presentation, if you are one of the people who make the optional a requirement, you will be highly successful. If you go and say, it's optional to go and email your professors. It's optional to hand in your assignments early so you can get feedback, so you can make sure that you get an A. But if you go and make those options a requirement, if you stop doing the bare minimum and you go and aim for the max, you will get it. If you aim for the moon, they say, if you miss, you'll still fall amongst the stars. I want the people who's in here to not just settle for just crumbs. I want you to eat the whole meal. I don't want you settling at appetizers and just salad. I want you to get the five course. I want you to get the appetizer. I want you to get a drink. I want you to go and get the entree and I want you to get dessert. And the only way we're gonna get there is if we go ahead and turn our options into requirements. And this is what changed it for me. What changed it for me was this picture right here. This is my beautiful wife. We've been married for almost six years. And I started thinking about what would life look like if I did not make my health, which was, hey, you could do whatever you want. You have a choice. You, could do, you don't have to take it seriously. But I said, if I don't take it seriously, then I won't even have an option to live with her. She won't have the option to live with me. I couldn't go and afford for her to not have these moments and pictures like these, where I had to be around to make sure that it happened. And I'm looking at every one of you, and as I'm talking to you, I, the world needs you to succeed. The world cannot have it be optional whether you go ahead and succeed or not. It's a requirement for Essex. It's a requirement for me. And my question and challenge to you is, will you make it a requirement for you? Will you make it a requirement for you? Will you say, Geo, my success is no longer an option. This is not a multiple choice test. There's only one choice that you can make and that's to make your success a requirement. There's no plan B. Success is the only thing we got. It's plan A through Z. That's it. There is no other choice. We have to succeed. Our family's counting on us. The world is counting on us. We have to succeed. And so I just want to just ask you guys, we talked about practice is everything. We talked about we got to be commitment driven. Don't be driven by your feelings. Let it be your commitment. And then we talked about we got to make it a requirement. And when we do so, everything changes. So just in the chat, tell me which one of these things stood out to you? Which one spoke to you and said, Gio, this one is it for me? Jessica says, we're the generation that will make a difference in the world. Yes. Prince says success. Which one has stood out to you? The, the glacier says Prince with the success part. The one for me is commitment over feeling, said Lorianne. Marianne says everything. Nick says the glacier. Jessica said the glacier. Practices everything, says Felicia. Making the optional requirement, says Kevin right? Ivana says everything. All of these things, if we start putting these things together, people, and we literally start to practice this, and again, you won't be perfect at it today. But I'm telling you, if practice is everything, then if we put this into practice, literally the game changes. If we go and said, yo, I'm going to make my options, the optional a requirement, that's going to make you a light years ahead of most people who will literally go ahead and say, you know what, it's optional. I ain't got to fill that out. I don't have to fill that out. You go ahead and make that a, a requirement and everything changes. Ernesto says everything, right? So I'm hoping that you are able to get something from this presentation. This is a beautiful thing we're doing. I love Essex because they decided, hey, we're not gonna just do this one time. We're doing a whole, we had student success day last year was good. We're not having a student success series where we're doing presentations just like this and we're doing another one next month and we're doing another one in November because they're committed to ensure in a time like this where we are, it's tougher than ever before to be attentive to go and focus, to lock in, to be committed. They're like, we're gonna give them even more resources to not take a chance and make their success an option. It's a requirement for us. Students are first, we're gonna make sure they have the resources. And so I thank them for being a part of this. I thank you guys, let me tell you something. I've been on many Zooms where I've seen 99 to 100 people. 
And here's the thing that I've realized. Most of the time that number goes down. It speaks to how badly you want it that I can go and be here an hour later. We're actually over time and I still see 99 people in here locked in. This tells me that there's something deep down inside that you really want and I'm telling you, it's that hunger. It's you being starving that's going to make sure you get it. This is, you, some of you may have felt like, yo, maybe you, I'm, I ain't feeling like staying on here for the whole time. But you said, you know what? I'm gonna choose my commitment to go and chase my goals and I'm still here. This is absolutely amazing. Essex, you guys have some amazing students in here who are literally right now making decisions as I'm speaking, saying that it is no longer an option for me to be successful. Student success day is not just about a day, it's a lifestyle. And we wanna go and make that decision every single day. Like a bulldog for and Antoine, I said, like, listen, I'm like a bulldog who hasn't eaten for months. Like I'm I'm hungry. Like I like I'm going, I'm 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 ready to eat. And I love the fact that you guys are so hungry because it literally gives me the greatest joy to be able to go and participate and partner with you in helping you become successful. So I thank all of you guys. This is something I just want to just get feedback from you. I want to go and make sure that I know what is it that you're committed to. What is the thing that you're going to make optional? So you can literally open up your phone, take a screenshot of this here. It'll open up if you have that scanning QR code feature. And there's just a couple of questions. Just I want to get feedback from you to make sure that we are continuing to go and push the envelope to make these great programs available to you and how we can continuously make them better. So you can go ahead and do that. That's my handle on the bottom for social media. If you guys go on Instagram and things like that, um, you can definitely go ahead and hit me up. I want to stay in touch with you. Essex is family to me and anybody who's connected to the school is connected to me. And so I want to make sure that we stay connected anywhere I can help you, anywhere I can motivate you, anywhere I can keep you inspired. And some of you, you might need a cup of coffee in the morning and sometimes the coffee and you don't want caffeine. Let me be the caffeine. I'll send you a quick thing and a, and a message to keep you motivated. Like, let's make sure that where we're trying to go, we get there. So I see here. Was this helpful, guys? I just put in the chat. Was this helpful? Did you guys, are you glad you came? Esber says, yes. Miriam said, thank you for this session, for bringing us to this meeting extremely. Yes, yes. Look at these chat. Oh, my gosh. This is like, guys, let's look at this. Yes, 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 yes. Very, 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 very. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. You, I needed that push, right? We all need that push. I appreciated this, man. Vanilli, I, that's a nice name. I've never seen that name before. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. No, guys, this has been absolutely amazing. Um, I'll be in my Zoom meeting, um, chemistry class and stuff like that. Guys, show up, man. The success is waiting for you, but it got to be claimed. And we just got to make those decisions. And if we make those decisions, our life will literally change. She said, Stanley says, yes, it helped me to be successful. Also, Ru says that you're truly a blessing. I appreciate what you did for me today. D Davey, I appreciate you for tuning in and being here for you. Thank you. My mindset just changed. Phil, this is why we do this work. This is why Student Life put together stuff like this. This is why we do what we do. It's for these transformations that are happening right now as we're talking. Guys, thank you so much for being on here with me. Thank you, Essex, for putting together another event. I can't wait for October for the next one. Um, Thank you so much, Mr. Graham. Thank you so much for what I've, um, what you've done. Um, so anybody, if you have questions, I'm here. I know some of us have to leave. If you have to do that, that's okay as well. But please, if you can, get, scan this code so we can stay in contact and I can get feedback from you as well. Um, Jessica said, my day started off bad, so thank you for your words of wisdom. Jessica, that's huge. That's huge. And I want everybody to understand, man, that if you go from, if you have a bad day and you just keep on going, there's a thing, Maya Angelou said this, she said, if you go into the dictionary and you look up the word bad and you keep on flipping the pages, you will stumble upon the word better. And here's the cool thing about it. If you don't quit, I'm okay with you taking a time out, but if you don't quit, better is waiting for you. So Jessica, I'm so glad you tuned in. I'm glad that your, bit, your day got a little bit better. And I know that the best is the best to come for you. The best to come for you. Absolutely. Who's here? Who's here? Antoinette says, practice. I was feeling so low before this meeting. Oh, this is huge. I appreciate what you're doing to keep our students on track. Oh, my pleasure. Francis says, can you share how God has impacted your life? Well, honestly, it's my belief. It, it, it just makes me believe in more. Um, there are days when you're lonely. There's days when you're sad. There's days you don't have hope. When you see things happening over and over again, 
and you don't see anything change, that's when your faith in believing in something, that's what you need. And so my belief in, I don't tell people what to believe, but my belief system in terms of what God has done for me and, and it's, it's been super impactful because I know that there are better days ahead, even if the days that I'm going through right now might be a little bit challenging. So for anything, it's just given me hope to believe that tomorrow will look different than today or yesterday did. And sometimes that's all the hope that you need to move forward. Jessica, I appreciate it. Jessica, you better not make me cry. You know, they, my wife says when she, when Gio sees somebody cry, he start crying. So like, <laughs> I got a good thing I got glasses on. But this is huge. I appreciate you guys. Now this is means the world. Kiana, you said hello. How are you, Kiana? Joseph says, how do you prevent yourself from taking these educational setbacks personally by moving forward through your determination? Joseph, that's an amazing question. Here's the thing I want you to understand. Your setbacks don't, your setbacks is something that happened. It doesn't mean that's who you are. It's hard to just, that's hard for us to not make that connection. What you do and who you are is two different things. You may have done bad in math. I've had bad speeches, people. Like, I know it might be surprising. I've had bad speeches. That just meant I had a bad day. It doesn't make me a bad person. That just, the setbacks that you're going through, if you understand the perspective that these educational setbacks only stay setbacks if I don't download the lessons they're teaching me, that's the key. So when you have your setbacks, that's okay. That's okay to have the setbacks, but make sure you're downloading the lessons that those setbacks are teaching you because that will become stepping stones for your setup and set you up for the better to come. The way to go and stay focused is focus on what am I determined to do? What's that big goal that I'm after that excites me and is so big that I'm willing to go and deal with the potholes on the road to still get there because it's so promising and so exciting to me. That's the way to really do it, Joseph. I get that there are gonna be setbacks and they will be. I would be lying to you if I told you they would not be. But what I do understand is if I understand that every setback has something in it for me, even though that's not the goal or the, the, the thing that I wanted, if I download the lessons, those lessons will give me what I need to make sure that I am able to get to that place that you're trying to move forward towards. Was that, I hope that answered um, your question. How did you develop being disciplined? Justin, here's the cool thing about what you just said. Discipline is developed. I wish I could tell you that I was able to do it. Here's the thing about discipline. They say discipline weighs, um, weighs ounces, right? The regrets weighs tons. The way you develop your discipline is by taking it one day at a time. Whether anything, you've heard people who've had addictions, the way they got over their addiction, one day at a time. No matter what you do, we can't live a week at a time. We can't live a month at a time. We can't live a year at a time. We only can live the 24 hours that we have. And so the way to develop discipline is to just ask yourself, what is one decision I'm going to make today that's going to get me closer to my goal? What's the one thing that I normally say yes to that I'm going to say no to today because I want to get to where I want to go? Every day you develop your discipline. So that his discipline, hey, I used my Instagram for five hours yesterday. Today, I'm not going to touch my phone more than twice. Discipline is putting in parameters to make sure you succeed. Maybe it's like putting it on do not disturb. Maybe it's putting it and putting limits on how long you spend on your app. Maybe for some of you who love your phone so much, maybe it's putting the phone in a different room. And if you really want to go and check it, you're going to have to get up to go and get it. It looks different for everybody, but just understand discipline is not something you're born with. It's something you build brick by brick. I hope that answers your question, Justin. That's an absolutely great question about discipline. Kevin says, how do we get rid of bad habits? Great question, Kevin. Here's the crazy thing about bad habits. Bad habits are built one day at a time, just like the good ones. You did not, if, in order for it to become a habit, you had to have done it repeatedly. So the only thing that you need to do to get rid of them is to just reverse the course. If you've done bad things, bad habits, you've done them day after day. All you need to do is to today make the decision to stop and just win today. Don't worry about trying to go and change your life. Your life is, is, is made up of days. 
And so if you just have one day and then you just say, you know what, I'm just going to repeat that good day and you not have two days in a row. And then you're like, yo, you know what, that was some good two days. I'm going to do it again. What you'll start to realize is you'll start to see those bad habits start to go wither away and you will literally start seeing the good habits come. And then when you get the feedback of the good habits and you see the success that it's bringing you, you will start to fall in love with what it's bringing you and you will find it a lot easier to stick to them and not to revert back to the bad ways that you were going. Um, I see here step, setbacks are stepping stones, says Antoinette. Yes, absolutely. William said, such as procrastination. Oh, guys, I'm telling you, if you loved what we talked about today, the next session in October, William, is going to be for you about procrastination. I don't want to ruin it. It's like a good movie. I don't want to ruin it for you, but I'm telling you, procrastination, here's a, here's a, little, a little tip I'm going to give you. Everybody procrastinates. They just choose to procrastinate on things different, on different things. That's all. So procrastination is not something that you need to get rid of. You just got to choose to procrastinate on the right things. What does that look like? Procrastinate on social media. Procrastinate on Netflix. Netflix ain't going nowhere. That show's still going to be on there. You good. You know, so just procrastinate on the things that are not helping you get to your goal and you literally will see um, your life change. Omar says your current situation is not your final destination. Absolutely. Absolutely. Guys, remember, we are not trees. We can move. We can move. So your situation, listen, you, you good. Like you're going to be able to get better. Trust me. If you just stick to it, you'll get there. Jessica says, everyone goes through your, their own season of difficulty. Absolutely. And here's the crazy thing. We only love the stories when the person gets on the other side. If somebody said, hey, I woke up, everything was easy. Everything was great. You're like, what's the point of the story? <laughs> right? But what's crazy is when we start to hear the obstacles and we see that they're able to overcome, that's where we find inspiration. And that story now helps us to go and create our own story of inspiration. So we, I'm not saying go and chase seasons of difficulty, but don't run away from them because there are something in them that will develop you to make you stronger. Maryam says, procrastinate on the right things. The best thing I learned, not on your goals or your education. Yes. Um, Antoine says, absolutely. Joseph said, those who are forewarned becomes forearmed. A warning about procrastination from one of my English professors. Tell your English professor, that's a, I might steal that one um, in my next presentation. I like that one, right? It's just so crazy that if we do the work before, we won't get um, beat up when the work actually shows up. So now guys, this has been absolutely amazing. I thank you guys. If you have any other questions, you can put it in the chat. Scan this code so we can get the great feedback from you. Follow me on social media. I want to stay connected with you. I always follow students back, um, as, as, you know, to stay connected. I want to see what you guys are doing. If you have any questions, please um, not just reach out to me. Reach out to the people at Essex who are here to help you. Um, I've seen them do it time and time again. I've seen them. I've never seen them turn away people from their offices. I've seen them go above and beyond. I've seen um, Mr. Graham and Joe with pens and papers and pads and saying, hey, guys, what else? And, they'll, and you know, if you've been to any of the virtual cafes, that they'll ask what else like 20 times because they want to make sure that every single need is met by the, um, that you guys have. So please lean on the great people at Essex. They're there to help you. They are there to be of service, but they are not mind readers. And because they're not mind readers, they don't know how to help you until you show them how or tell them how. All right, guys, thank you. Anybody got, thank you guys for still being here. This is crazy. This is dope. Appreciate you guys. Okay, okay. I'm seeing people faces. This is dope. All right. On behalf of Essex County College and Student Life and Activities, we want to send a big shout out, big round of applause. Drop a, a hundred thanks in the chat, please, chat for Gio Dereese. Gio, that was amazing. Thank you guys. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Oh, this, people turn on their cameras. I appreciate y'all. Thank you. Turn on Thank your camera. Let them see your face. Let me see our faces real quick. Joseph was good. Dab on him. <laughs> Stephanie. That's a beautiful. I've never seen some. That's how you spell your name for real? Yeah. That's dope. <laughs> she like, I'm, 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 the, I'm that Stephanie. Like not, like, not the other one with the P-H-N-E-I. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little different. Nah, that's dope. I like it. Thank you. Davey, you a Nick fan? Yes, I am. Loyal. 
That, that that's commitment. Once I see a Nick fan, I'm like, yo, you, you, you committed on another level. Like, <laughs> what's up there with the Met fans? Say that again. What's right up there with the Met fans? That's that's commitment Nick, right there. Nick, that's right? super about, commitment. <laughs> Nick, Nick, I didn't talk about baseball. I left you alone. Don't be talking about my Mets. But they told me you were a Mets fan. You said Brooklyn. I, I, I made the connection immediately. Leave Shots fired. Uh, Instagram said, hey, now, Nick. You had it's a up. sore spot. <laughs> it's a sore spot. Mr. Graham and I, we like the Mets. And I can't believe we didn't make the playoffs, even though they let half of the baseball like, team. Like you guys always say, next year. Nick, <laughs> you are now dismissed from this meeting. <laughs> <laughs> next year, next year. <laughs> I know this is dope. Kevin, nice to see you, man. How you doing, man? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I'm glad to see it. Van- Vanilli, can you tell me how to pronounce your name? Vanilli, like vanilla. Vanilli? Yes. Nice. Sometimes when I go on these Zooms, I like try to steal names and bring them to my wife so that when we have kids, I'm like, this is the name that I want. Actually, it's <laughs> mine. This is dope. Oh, look at this. I'm seeing Marquise. Good to see you. You better be listening to me and not no music with those headphones. <laughs> now nah, this is good. And um, how do you, is it Thaleen? How do, how do you say your name? Tylani. Tylani? Mm-hmm. Nice. Yo, I'm, I'm learning stuff here today. <laughs> That's dope. It's Please. like the name for the child, I guess. I'm 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 taking all the because <laughs> my wife she gets she gets vote number one two three and four so I need like a good name to have a chance. You might be fine. <laughs> I might make it. <laughs> Hi, Jamil. It's the queen. How are you? I'm doing well. Glad you're here, Jason. How are you? I see Jason Debari. Is it Carmelan or Car- how do you say your name? Car- Carmelan? Did I say it wrong? Tell me how to say it. Yes, you did. <laughs> it's Carmelan. Carmelan, got it. Carmelan, got it, got it. I'm glad you guys are on here. Y'all hanging out. It is so crazy, Joe. What's crazy what happens is like, we'll say like, hey, you guys are dismissed. And then they, and everybody just want to hang out. Like, just, we're just going to have a good time with each other. So this you, is cool. You got more than half of our attendees still here after the presentation crazy. ended. So how- I just want to remind, remind you all. Everybody, when there's that many people, it's crazy. I want to remind you all. We will be having Geo back on October 20th. It's on our October flyer. Check your email. Mm-hmm. The presentation is called "It's About Time." So oh, that'll man. be Geo Part Two. Don't miss it. We will make sure the meeting room can handle way more. <laughs> Marielle says, um, "Noted." October 20th. I love it. My real name is Kiara. Is it yeah, Kiara? Not Kiana. No, I love it. I love it. Sapphire. I like the way you creatively put your name on there. Like I got the stars next to my name. Like this. Oh, <laughs> so I have the stars on there for uh, class purposes. So there's a class that I am, you know, thankful enough that my professor lets me go into, even though I have just a strictly traditional online learning class. He lets me go into the Zoom class. So I was like, okay. But he's like, so that I know it's you. And I don't take your attendance. Please put asterisks by your name. And I was like, okay. It looks good. I'm like, I'm, 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 like, I'm gonna have to go change my name. I, I want, I want some asterisks. Get some attention, you know. It yes. just draws a little attention. And I'm just a little bit. <laughs> Kiara. Well, um, <laughs> while I'm here, uh, everybody that's here, I'm on my phone, so I can't see everybody's faces. I just want to say hello to everyone. This is my face. I am Sapphire Rodriguez, the SGA president. If you guys have any questions, comments concerns issues you need any help a friend to talk to please don't hesitate to reach out uh mr graham gives my email out like it's free cheese and that's okay with me just talk to me if you guys have problems you guys want a friend it's me just reach out um on friday we're also having an sga kickoff so i'd like to see you guys all there just like you're here now you know support student government and yeah that's all this is dope nice to meet you president (laughs) <laughs> it's nice to meet you. You are so inspiring. So I'm glad we get to talk a little. Absolutely. Now that's dope. And there goes your email right I there. See, like Mr. Graham put it in. <laughs> he put it in the group chat for me. <laughs> email exploiter, Dr. Graham. Nice job. I love it. <laughs> Listen, it's with permission, so it's okay. 
Now there's a lot of people in here. Denise, nice to meet. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. As many people that are in here, just you know, get my information. There's plenty of us that you could talk to. We're really here to help, and we want to do everything we can to help. Oh, so. Thank you for tuning in to Student Success Day. We hope that you learned a lot from this presentation. We want to thank our special guest, as always, Mr. Gio Derees. Thanks, man. We really appreciate Pleasure, you talking Joe. to students. Absolutely. Awesome. He will be back with us on October 20th. October 20th. Do not forget to tune in. Make sure y'all register to vote and get your census done. We're adults. <laughs> That's right. Get Sense those things done. Vote. Check your email. Yes. Do all of those things, please. All right. On behalf of Student Life and Activities and Essex County College, thanks for tuning in to Student Success Day. We'll see you next time. Take care.